Hey everyone, this is Jared. The iPhone 7 Plus has been in my life for about 30 days now and I've been using it as my daily driver. And while I still prefer Android to iOS, big surprise there I know, as a device I've actually really liked it. And while I know there's other smartphones out there with the matte black color scheme, I just really like how it looks on the iPhone. And everyone who I've let hold it agrees with me that it feels like a solid phone, it feels like a high-end product. But while we're talking about holding the iPhone 7 Plus, I'll admit it's been a bit of a struggle for me. I have average sized hands and found that I was either using it as much as possible with both hands for fear of losing grip and dropping it, or I did that double tap the home button action in case I only had one hand free. And for a phone with a 5.5 inch display compared to other devices with similar size displays, it sure does have a large footprint. But if you're wanting arguably one of the best 1080p displays on a smartphone, you're gonna have to suck it up because when watching online content or doing anything really, you'll immediately be impressed with the punchy but not oversaturated colors razor sharp text and display brightness, especially in daylight. Apple just flat out knows how to make great displays, but internal audio for me was just meh. Um, I don't really have anything to complain about. The dual speakers do a well enough job to hear music or watch videos in somewhat noisy environments, but I have heard better, more full sounding dual speaker setups on other devices before, so there's still some room for improvement. The lack of a headphone jack has caught me off guard a few times while in the car wanting to connect my auxiliary cable, but honestly, give me another month and I'd probably get used to it. And besides, except for my car, I use Bluetooth for everything else, so it's just sort of a non-issue for me. And I don't really have any opinion on the new haptic home button. I think it's fine and the taptic motor behind it, to me, feels like a real button press. As long as it works and it works well, I don't care if it's a piece of metal, glass, or plastic, but I do have a positive opinion on the fingerprint reader. It's one of the most consistently fast and accurate on the market, and I love it. An IP67 dust and water resistant certificate accompanies the iPhone for the first time ever, which is a major bonus and I think a necessary step forward if they refuse to upgrade the display resolution while competing with other smartphone OEMs that offer both dust and water resistance, but also arguably better displays at higher resolutions. Battery life on the 7 Plus is simply brilliant. 2900 milliamp hours is a decent capacity for any phone, but boy does Apple do battery optimization well. Not once did I drain the battery in one day. Most of the time I'd end the day with about 40% left or more, and on days when I needed to use it a lot, I'd end up with about 15-20% to 20 by about 1am. So the 7 Plus gets a big gold star for that. So as I mentioned in my camera comparison video between the Galaxy S7 and the iPhone 7 Plus, which I'll I'll link to in the description below. I like the 12 megapixel cameras on the 7 Plus. I think the telephoto zoom lens is neat, but I found that I never used it. I think it's probably because I found the secondary wide angle camera on LG's recent phones to be more useful to my personal photography needs. So I think that's sort of a personal choice, but the pictures look great. Colors are pleasing, though the white balance is certainly tilted towards the warm side, which some people like and it also has a tendency to blow out highlights. And although the Galaxy S7 is better in low light, the iPhone 7 Plus still does a good enough job at capturing moments that might otherwise have not been distinguishable with other phones. So the iPhone gets another gold star for that, but I do still wish we had some more manual controls. The iPhone 7 Plus is an awesome all around phone. There's lots of great things about it, and I've even recommended it to some friends and family over some current Android offerings. Having said that, I am looking forward to getting back to Android as I wait for Google's Pixel XL to show up at my door, but that's of course personal preference. Anyways, I hope you all liked the video. If you did, show me some love and tap that like button. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on new videos from me every week. But that's it for me. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.